I'm excited, Jordan. I wonder why DP Review invited us here to Seattle without telling us why. I did tell them it was my birthday coming up. I bet you they're gonna throw me a surprise party. That's nice. Hey, Carrie. Hey, right, mate. Okay. What's up? Look, I really appreciate bringing us out here. I'm not being into surprises, but throwing a party for me, that's way too much, man. That's so generous. What the f are you talking about? We, need to, we have a new camera. You have to review it by the end of today. Oh. Uh, su surprise. Welcome back, Deep Review TV viewers. Chris Nichols here, of course, and Jordan and I are coming to you from Seattle this time. We are hanging out with the Deep Review staff because, of course, as has just been announced upon you watching this video, is the brand new Nikon Z50. This is a very compelling camera because this is Nikon's first venture into APS-C mirrorless with this lens mount. And uh, I do want to get this out of the way because this is still just announced. This is very much a heavily pre-production design camera. No final firmware. The images you're going to see here, the video, the menus, the features, take all that with a grain of salt because this is pre-production. However, I think we can still get a nice little first look at this camera, its design and its features. So join us today, we're gonna have a nice day out here. It's also important to mention that we have two new lenses that we get to play with here as well. Of course, also pre-production lenses, but we have the new DX16-50, to which is a very compact uh, pancake zoom, if you want to call it that. We also have the DX50-250 to telephoto. We're going to shoot a little bit on that as well. And I did also bring a 50mm 1.8S lens, which is the full frame 50mm for the Z mount, to put on here as well. So right off the bat, one of my initial impressions using the camera is that they've done a very good job considering the price point. So first off, the Z50 with the 16 to 50 kit lens is just under $1,000 US. That is pretty impressive. And we are getting a fully uh, magnesium constructed body here. It's got a very rugged feel, fantastic grip. They're saying that there are O-ring seals around a lot of the dials and buttons, so you get a little bit of extra peace of mind there. But one of the things that I think is gonna be there to save cost is the lack of IBIS. Keep in mind that the Z6 and Z7 do have in-body image stabilization, and here on the Z50, we don't have it. Maybe we'll see more APS-C cameras in the future, a more advanced model that might have that incorporated. Now keep in mind that the lenses do have image stabilization. The 1650 is promising about four and a half stops, and the 50 to 250, about five stops of IS, but you're not gonna get anything in the body if you're using lenses that don't have IS. So we do have a brand new sensor here. Nikon's saying it is now newly designed, of course, to accommodate the phase detector ray. It is just over 20 megapixels, and if it is anything like the D7500 slash D500 sensor, we are getting excellent high ISO performance, very good dynamic range, certainly comparable to a lot of the other 24 megapixel sensors on the market right now. Jordan, I'm gonna take a picture of this spider here. Sorry, Chris, I'm too busy filming spiders. So the first thing you'll notice about both kit lenses, the 16 to 50 and the 50 to 250, is they are quite light and compact. They are quite plastic in construction with plastic lens mounts. And uh, unfortunately, you are looking at a maximum wide aperture at the telephoto ranges respectively of f6.3. That does help keep them a little bit smaller, especially the 16 to 50, which is essentially a pancake lens. However, you know, of course, there's a lot of other kit lenses out there, 16 to 50s, 18 to 55s from other camera companies, 15 to 40s. 45s, and they'll often have a 5.6 aperture in those same situations. So luckily the sensor does push up to 51,200 and although we can't test it yet, I am confident it should handle low light situations at high ISO quite well. We gotta go, we got the next location. Dude, but this is like one giant Japanese puddle. Come on. 
Now, when it comes to the displays on the Z50, we are scaling down a little bit to keep the cost down from the Z6 and the Z7, but it's all in line with what you'd expect at this price point. So for the LCD on the back, we have just over a million dots. Because of the thin nature of this camera, the fact we've got ports right here, we can't do a side articulating screen, but we do get waist level articulation as well as vlog style going underneath the camera. That also makes way for this very nice EVF. We've got good eye relief here, 2.36 million dots. So again, par for the course at this price point. Yes, oh dude, no, yeah, yeah. Yes, hold it, hold it, oh dude. I just wait for that truck to get out. Yes, and look at me, yes, yes. Give it to me, steal, oh. So the Z50's body is quite small compared at least to the Z6, Z7, but it still has a fair amount of size, especially that EVF on top. Fantastic grip, very chunky, very reminiscent to their other cameras. I like that feel, it's very familiar. Uh, I will say also, we've got a smaller body design because of a new battery type. So this is now an ENEL 25. It fits in here in the grip, nice and compact, and we've got a single UHS-2 card slot right beside it. Now with the smaller battery, you might be worried about battery life, and this is really one of the things I have to wait till we get final firmware before I can really definitively say. We're getting a SEPA rating of about 300 shots, which is pretty average. I do like that Nikon provides an external charger with the cameras, and you can charge off USB through the micro B port. It's a nice port in that you can find a cable anywhere and you can charge with pretty much anything, but I do want to see more cameras coming with USB-C ports so we get more multifunctionality. Now look at this, we've got the very famous DP Review Bike Test Autofocus Alley, but I'm not gonna talk about autofocusing. Let's talk about picture styles, why not? Why not? No good reason whatsoever not to. So when it comes to picture styles on the Z50, they're borrowing a lot of the same effects features that we had on the 5000 series. So you got your toy camera, your miniature camera. You know, I took some samples here for you. You're very welcome. Here's some super vivid stuff. Here's a new sort of night vision mode, which is like super high ISO, very high contrast. Have fun with those. And this is really trying to appeal to a crowd that might want a more simple, easy, fun, JPEG centric way of shooting. So the Z50's AF performance, I'm actually very pleased with. It's very similar to the Z6 and Z7. I'm very happy leaving this camera just in wide auto area, which is a mode I would never use because it engages very easily with those 209 phase detect autofocusing arrays. Uh, people's faces, goes right to the eyes if it sees those. I can use the directional pad to very easily move back and forth between eyes and faces. I can also touch on the back of the screen. And again, it's smart enough that if it's a person's face and I touch on their face, it will engage face and eye detect. If it's not a face, it will then engage tracking, and that works also very, very well. So overall, I'm finding the interface fairly easy to use, but here's one thing I do want to mention. So when I bring the Z50 up to my eye to now use the EVF, there's a couple things that change. So first off, I can't use the touchscreen anymore. I, I lose the ability to just touch on a person and have it lock on their face or eye based on my choice of where I want it to go. Unfortunately, the touchpad doesn't work, and I still don't know why that's gone away. I really miss it from the 5500 and 5600. 600 Nikon SLRs. I thought it made a lot of sense, especially because we don't have a joystick on this camera. We just have the directional pad. That touchscreen interface would have been really nice to use in lieu of that. It also means that when I do bring the camera up to my eye, I can no longer touch on a person. So I have to let the wide auto area detect faces automatically, or I can hit the OK button once to bring up a tracking box and then hit it again to lock on to a subject, but that doesn't engage face detect and eye detect. It does do a great job of tracking and it can be nice if you want to lock onto a subject and ignore people's faces so that some person looking at the camera in the background doesn't automatically steal your focus away. But it does mean that when I go between the EVF or looking off the back screen, my interface changes slightly and I have to get used to those two different options. Hey everyone, it's Jordan to talk about video from the Nikon Z50, which is filming me right now in 4K 24p in the flat profile, which gives you a little flexibility in grading. However, what we're really excited about is they have the picture effects, which are not only available in stills, but in 4K video as well. Behold the dream profile. 
And speaking of dream, well, maybe not a dream, but it's nice. We do have the phase detect autofocus system from the Z6 and Z7. Now, Nikon has historically had pretty bad autofocus in video mode with their DSLRs because they were just contrast detect. We were quite impressed with the video autofocus from the Z6 and 7. It's in here. We're using face and eye detect right now. And you can see it does a pretty nice job and very smooth transitions, which I really like as opposed to something quickly jumping from one subject to another. Enjoy the punchy contrast and cool tones of the Sunday profile while I talk about the screen on this. It is kind of nice, you can tilt it up and down and also flip it underneath the camera if you want it to vlog. Works great if you're just hand holding the camera, but if you want to use a tripod or a gimbal, you're not going to be able to see your screen. It is nice though, you can still stick a microphone on top. The melancholia continues because unfortunately there is no IBIS in this, unlike the Z6 and Z7. Now, the two Z crop lenses that have been released along with this do have stabilization, so that's a good option to fall back on. However, none of those other full-frame Z lenses are going to offer it, and a lot of the DX lenses don't either, so you're going to have to use some sort of gimbal or stabilization if you're shooting video with this. Again, it's a real issue if you're handheld vlogging, which is what that screen's for. Other problem for video production is there's no headphone jack in this. I get that it's a small body, but the A6600 also has a small body and a headphone jack. Let's wrap this up with a little pop, and honestly, the image quality from this is pretty good when recording 4K despite the crop. I don't think this is a camera you're going to buy specifically for shooting video, but if you've got some DX lenses you want to use, shoot some video, I think this is the best option out there right now, but it's primarily going to cater to Nikon shooters. Okay, so as you can see, it's gotten a little bit dark outside. It's nighttime now in Seattle. We're hanging out doing some low light shooting on the Z50. And of course, when you don't have a lot of light, it's nice to have something to supplement that. We do have a pop-up flash here, something the Z6 and Z7 do not incorporate. It is absolutely useful to have a little pop-up flash. Some people are gonna love it anytime you wanna do some fill flash or you know, provide some really harsh straight on directional light if you need that. But unfortunately, although this does have TTL and manual capability, it does not give you command or mode to control wireless flashes. That would have been a nice touch. So you are gonna have to look at putting on a separate transmitter or like an SB5000 or SB910, something that can do master control for the CLS system. So obviously we have to keep in mind that the Z50 is a brand new system, right? I mean, this is their first APS-C in the Z mount. So we're not gonna have a lot of lenses. So far it's the 16 to 50 and the 50 to 250. And who knows when we're gonna see more lenses thrown into that roadmap. Now, of course you absolutely can use a lot of the full frame glass and so that's what you're going to see me doing and as expensive as the full frame lenses are that is really your only option right now other than using the FTZ adapter and throwing some faster DX lenses on and that is absolutely an option as well. I had a lot of fun with the Nikon Z50. It was actually a very capable camera. And to me, what I really enjoyed about it was very capable features. The eye autofocus, for example, seems to be up to the standard that we get on the Z6 and Z7. I found the menu interface very, very familiar. The touch screen, I do wish there was a joystick, but otherwise it was capable and I was able to navigate the camera as I needed to. The grip feels fantastic. The body is lightweight and more compact than the full frame versions, but still has a nice sealed and rugged kind of feel to it. I found it a very capable camera and I think if you're an enthusiast or if you want like a baby Z6 or Z7 that still gives you great image quality, this is going to be a fantastic option for you. You know, I think Nikon's trying to market this to a sort of an entry level crowd, creators, Instagrammers, and time will tell how well that works. But for me, I feel like there's a lot of cameras on the market that are absolutely trying to appeal to a far more easy entry level kind of experience. And to me, although this camera is not hard to use, it's absolutely a camera that enthusiasts and maybe even more advanced photographers will certainly jump into very comfortably. But the success of this platform is really gonna hinge on how many more lenses are we gonna see in this APS-C format for Z mount, or are we gonna have to rely on Nikon DX SLR glass with an adapter or full frame lenses? Well, that's something that only time will tell. But as soon as we get full versions of this camera, we will absolutely do a full review on it. Don't forget, check out deepreview.com. There'll be a lot more information on this camera coming out shortly. Please subscribe, check out Instagram and our Twitter feeds. Let us know what you think below, and thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you guys very soon with more reviews.